Hello there, I'm Vieno and this is my 8th video tutorial on D3. Uh, in this video, this video will be a bit shorter than the rest of them. Uh, I will just cover the very basics of uh, transitions in D3. Uh, transitions are basically like animations. You change the property of some object and, and uh, apply it smoothly over time. So it's not changed instantaneously, but rather creates an, an animated effect. So I'm going to show you here real quick how this is uh, done. So first of all I have this, uh, I have a canvas and I have a circle. And uh, this looks like that in the browser. Uh, so let's say we, we wanted to change, we wanted to transition this circle to the right. Uh, the way we do that is first of all Let's just uh, select the circle and simply type transition and then we specify like what the new value that uh, in what way we want to transition or animate our circle. So we want to move it to the right so we uh, just pick the CX attribute and let's uh, give it a new value of 150 and save and let's refresh and you can see that it it switched over uh, to the right uh, there are some additional uh, ways to modify this behavior we can also specify a duration and this is specified in the milliseconds so I, th I think the um, the default value here if you just leave it like this is 500 and even if you don't even need that, uh, it's going to be 500 anyways. But we can change um, the transition time here. Let's say 1500, which is one and a half seconds. And save and refresh. And we get the same transition, but uh, a bit slower. Uh, we can also give this a delay so that uh, it will transition, but only after the number of milliseconds we specify here within brackets. So let's say we wanted the transition to start after two seconds and then um, transition over one and a half seconds, right? So let's save and refresh and one, two, boom. Yeah. And uh, obviously here we can like specify any value which we yeah let's just change this to CY let's change this to one second and obviously we get the same result but it moves in the vertical direction and you can change the color here the radius whatever um, what else yeah you can let's erase that you can uh, add a new transition after another so let's just say transition again and this time go down to 200 so this looks like that and then down and of course we can repeat this again uh, attribute CX go back to 50 save doom doom boom uh, it's really easy to work with transitions in D3 uh, let's see if I've forgotten something here yeah okay so a final thing that uh, is uh, the each method. Now this is um, this is called an event listener. So if we add this after our transition, let's say, and we can specify what we want the the listener to listen to. And if we, uh, for instance, type in end here, we can create a new function as the second parameter, and uh, and uh, make something else happen 
and the end part here refers to the end of the transition so this each end um, will mm, this function will run after the transition has ended so here we can type in whatever we can say d3 select this and when you have an anonymous function like this uh, this refers to the the, uh, the element that we that we're using so the circle uh, d3 select this we can uh, change the color to red let's say we want to change the color to red after the transition is done so fill red and end uh, so let's take a look at this so the transition and then the circle turns red and you can do a lot of stuff with this you can change this to start so when the transi when the transition starts uh, the circle turns red so yeah as you can see it's red instantaneously if we give this a delay delay one second save it begins as black and then it turns red when the transition starts so yeah that was a short introduction to uh, transitions in d3